Thank you. You're Getting a little long in the tooth, though. I'm, I'm 41 today. I, I Damn, I look good, though, don't I? Yeah, your teeth ain't got no longer, baby. I love it. Baby, it, it's, it's a phrase. I, I get it's a it. phrase. Turn left onto Eddy Street. Maybe I should you need a direction. And here's the thing. Um, I don't know why men don't like to do directions. I got I got uh, Sarita on the phone. That's that's not serious. So she, <laughs> she could tell me where I need to go. So we're here. I'm all IV'd up. Surgery is scheduled for 7.30. I'm looking a hot mess. There was no way to be fabulous here. Um, as uh, Stephen kept telling me, it wasn't gonna happen anyway, but I tried. You're at the hospital. It's not the point. You don't wanna look like this ever. But um, I will check in again later. I have to leave my phone with Stephen and I'm gonna lock it so he can't go through it and scroll to do any swiping, anything like that. Well, if you have he things to, like that in there anyway, then it's a problem. So. He needs to be minding his so business. So so my problem. phone's so now, all locked. So now I'm even more curious. I'm yeah, you can be as curious to, as you like. You're not I, getting in. I have to take it to T-Mobile and see if I can. Mm, whatever. It, so. Anyway, I'll check in later. Hopefully I'll look better than this when I come out. Okay. And what is this for? It's for me. Oh. I told you I was keeping a log of this. I might put it on YouTube or something later. But either way, I just want to remember the moments. Good morning, everyone. So it is Sunday morning, and it is essentially the the seventh day. It's been seven days since my myomectomy. Um, I have had some really good days where you could barely tell that I that there was a surgery. And I've had some days when, for whatever reason, it's just been kind of challenging and painful. This is one of those days. Last night was one of those days. Okay, everybody. So, it is December 27th. No, it's December 26th. And I am on my way to my first post-op uh, examination. Um... Today is the ninth day after my abdominal myomectomy to remove fibroids. Um, Steven's bringing the car around and we are on our way. Um, I have a log um, that I've been keeping track of, things like temperature fluctuations, some little things that you know I feel like are questions. Um, but instead of trying to retain everything to memory, I kind of wrote things down. So the basic update is this. First and foremost, guys, Happy New Year. Today is January 2nd, um, and it's been um, a, pretty much a full two weeks since my um, my actual surgery, which I had on December 17th. Um, and I am happy, happy, happy to announce that today is official. Okay, so my last two weeks, um, yeah, my last two weeks was mainly about um, keeping my diet fortified, making sure that I maintained that I was getting lots of, uh, uh, I should say, a, a big variety of fruits and vegetables. Um, maintaining my protein intake, um, and I would say monitoring uh, the quality of my carbs. Okay guys, so we are now test driving the ProMaster. It is a 2016 ProMaster 2500 cargo van. Good morning everybody. So today is the morning after or I guess you could say day two of um, our countdown to our freedom journey. And yes, I am in the driver's seat. So I've been driving, I've been driving all morning, just kind of trying to get myself acclimated to this vehicle because I'm not gonna lie to you guys. Um, 
I was super intimidated to get behind the wheel. Um, I drive back and forth to Concord every day to get to work, and I'm like, uh, dude, the freeway, the bridge, um, that's a lot, and this big old, big old baby here. So, um, it, it's gotten much better. I started off pretty early this morning, maybe around six or so in the morning. I wanted to go out when there was really um, very little traffic, um, and give myself the ability to kind of get comfortable um, in my in my backyard, so to speak. I went to a few um, parking lots, kind of drove around, kind of got used to the feel of the, the way this car kind of operates, the turns. You know the signaling you know just everything is different from you know of course my previous car and this there's a lot riding on this right now so you know i have to be just as capable and efficient at driving this car or this van as you know as steven is you know because i got to get around too and this is about self-sufficiency in every way this is this is about empowering myself um to go to the next level in my life um and there's there's no room for, oh, I'm scared, I don't know, and I'm not sure. And I mean, I get it, a nice, healthy dose of, you know, caution, you know, is fine. But I can't allow fear to hold me back any longer. I can't allow um, me not, you know, being comfortable with something or my comfort level in certain things be the thing that kind of keeps me in place. That's just, it's just not acceptable anymore. Hey, guys. So I just wanted to talk to you all a little bit about my phoenix here and what it represents for me. Well, the phoenix in general represents transition and that is essentially what this phase of my life is about right now. I am transcending or transitioning to a new level myself and I wanted something that would represent that transition from one level to the next and just like my tattoo here is in the process it's not quite complete nor is my transition wow my life has changed so much in just two short years I was terrified to undergo that surgery so I actually promised the universe that if it saw me through, that I'd change my life. So after getting a new lease on life, I knew I could not go back to working in a career I was miserable in. I knew I could never go back to chasing someone else's dreams. I knew it was time to figure out my purpose in life. And to do that, I'd have to find myself and then be her unapologetically. My journey has just begun.